All right. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this week's live stream. Uh, so as you are coming in, please leave a comment. Just let me know that you're here and maybe tell me today, uh, how are you today? Or what will you do this weekend? So hello, everyone. Um, as usual, today, I will share a lesson with you. And then after the lesson, I will answer some of your questions. So make sure to listen to the lesson carefully. And maybe you can ask your questions anytime. So even if I am in the middle of the lesson, you can type your comment or question, and I will answer you at the end. So make sure, ask your English questions throughout the lesson. So today we are going to learn about a very useful topic, which is prefixes and suffixes. So maybe you are familiar with these and maybe you know what they are, maybe you don't. Um, so today, and even if you do, hopefully today you learn a little more. Oh, I see we have a comment from Hanla. Hello, thank you so much for coming today. From Kasem. good morning from Morocco, very cool. Mohammed, hi, hello, thank you for joining today. Uh, good, good evening. Oh, so, uh, uh, uh Mohammed, uh, it must be evening where you are. Yes. Oh, pff, best teacher ever. Thank you so much. Best student ever. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, hello. Thank you. Thanks everyone for your hellos. So happy to see you here today. Okay. Uh, I see a, qu a question. Can you speak slowly, please? Yes. I can, and I will today. Uh, so yes, I will, don't worry. Okay, so um, thank you all. I see we have many people joining today. So let's begin. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Please just wait one moment, okay. All right. All right, so you should see my screen now. So welcome to today's live stream. Today, we will learn about prefixes and suffixes. So we will talk about what are these things? Why are they important? And how can we use them in our English learning? So let's get started. So first, why should you learn about prefixes and suffixes? Before we even talk about what they are, why should you learn about them? Learning common prefixes and suffixes can help you understand new words quickly and easily. So knowing about these two things, prefixes and suffixes, will help you when you see a new English word uh, to maybe notice the different parts of the word, understand what they mean, and give you a better chance to know what they mean without looking it up in a dictionary. So maybe you can guess a little easier what new words or big words mean. So what are prefixes and suffixes? Prefixes and suffixes are word parts added to base words that change their meaning. So prefixes are added to the beginning of base words and suffixes are added to the end of base words, and they change their meaning. So first, let's talk about prefixes. We're going to be looking at and using this kind of formula today. So if we want, when we're using and looking at words, we have our prefix, our base word, and our suffix. So sometimes we only have a base word. 
Sometimes we only have a prefix and a base word, and sometimes we only have a base word and a suffix, and sometimes we have all three. So let's look at prefixes and base words, base words and suffixes, and all three together, and see how we can use these wonderful tools. So let's begin by learning some common prefixes. So prefixes come at the beginning of words and our first prefix is pre. So uh, as we see here, before we even look at the meaning, the word prefix has the prefix pre, which means before. So I mentioned prefixes come at the beginning of words Pre means before. So our first prefix is pre. Next, we will talk about the prefix un, then re, dis or miss, co, and il, im, in, and ear. Uh, so if they're together, it means they have the same meaning. So we talked about what pre means, but let's take a look at what each of these prefixes mean. So pre means before. Just like prefix, that pre shows us that it comes before the word. Next we have un. <clears throat> this is one maybe you already know, right? Un means not lacking, so don't have, lacking means you don't have something, or opposite of. For example, happy, if we want to change that to the opposite, we would say unhappy, means not happy, right? Next, we have re, R-E. This means again. For example, I might say something like review. So this means to, like I often say, make sure when you learn something to review it. Means view or look at again, right? Review, look again. Uh, next we have dis and miss. So both of these mean not, wrong, or again, opposite of. So there are many prefixes and suffixes that have the same or similar meanings, as we will see. Uh, next, we have the prefix co. This means together or with. And last for our most common prefixes, we have il, im, in, and ear, which means not or without. So we can see here that these three, un, dis, and miss, and these four all similarly mean not, right? Lacking or without and opposite of. But we can't use them in the same way with every word, but we'll see some examples. And when you come across words with these prefixes, you will have a better understanding of what they mean. So let's take a look at some, here we have uh, six of our prefixes that we've chosen here, pre, un, re, dis, co, and il. So let's add base words to them and see if we can guess what they mean. So let's begin with pre. Do you remember what pre means? Pre means before. So when we add a base word, like a verb, view, preview. So here that means view before, preview. So for example, uh, when you are waiting to see a movie, you might see a preview, which means maybe about one minute or two minutes short clip of a video of a new movie coming out. So you haven't seen the movie yet, but you have seen a preview, seen a little bit before the movie preview. Let's look at our next one. So here we have un, oh, where's my 
mouse, where did it go? Sorry, guys, there it is. So we have un, which means not. So for example, let's add a base word, undo. So undo means opposite of do. So maybe if you're typing on your computer, for example, and you make a mistake, you might hit control Z to undo or opposite of do, right? Not do. So un means not, lacking or opposite of. So undo, opposite of do. Next we have re, which means again. So if we have, let's add a base word, start, restart. So this would mean start again. Uh, maybe uh, you are building something. Let's say you got a, a new um, table from Ikea. Maybe you guys have been there, have to build your own table and oh, you make a mistake. Oh no, you might have to restart or start again. Next, let's look at dis. So dis and miss have the same meaning, which is again, not or opposite of. So here we have dis appear. This means opposite of appear. So what does appear mean? Appear means to show up, right? Suddenly you can see something. So let's say uh, mm, I'm there's a fly flying around and it appears. Oh, suddenly I see it in front of my face. Then if I suddenly, maybe it goes to hide, it disappears. I can't see it anymore. Disappear, opposite of appear. Next, let's look at our prefix co, which means with or together. Coexist. Coexist means to exist or live together. So for example, many people coexist, which means exist together in a good way, in a happy way, um, in my neighborhood, right? Many people coexist, live together. Last for our example, we have ill, which again means not, without, or opposite of. So ill, legal, illegal. This means not legal. So legal has to do with law and rules, right? So if something is illegal, it means you should not do it. And if you do, you will get in trouble, right? Illegal. So as you can see, maybe if you had never seen the word illegal before, knowing that that prefix ill means not might help you look at it and say, oh, okay, it means not legal. And I can just look up what does legal mean if you don't know already. So understanding these prefixes can be very useful. All right, so now that we have done some together, let's see if you can guess. So as you're watching, maybe say out loud, what do you think these words mean? So let's start with untrue. We'll start with an easy one. <clears throat> what do you think untrue means? We have our prefix un and our base word true, untrue. What could that mean? Did you guess it? Untrue means not true, right? Un means not, so not true. So for example, uh, and another word we might use is lie, right? It's a lie, it's not true, it's untrue. If someone said today is Monday, well, that's untrue, not true. Okay, let's take a look at our next one, misunderstand. So here we have our prefix miss and our base word understand, misunderstand. So do you remember what miss means? Miss means not wrong or opposite of. So misunderstand means the opposite of understand. So to understand wrongly, 
or uh, to not understand. <clears throat> For example, if you are talking to someone uh, and they don't, they maybe they get the wrong idea about what you are saying. No, you misunderstood. You misunderstand. You did not understand what I said. All right, let's take a look at our next one, co-create. So we have our prefix co and our base word create. So co means together or with. So to co-create means to create together. Let's say I am working on a new song and my friend and I, my I have several friends who we all play music together. So we make a new song together. We could say we co-created the song. We created it together. <clears throat> all right, so next let's take a look at rebuild. We have our prefix re and our base word build. So rebuild means to build again. <clears throat> so I mentioned something with Ikea furniture, rebuild, have to do it again, right? All right, our last one is impossible. So we have our prefix im and our base word possible. So as we see when we're looking at base words, uh, we can have any kind of base word, an, a an adjective, a noun, a verb, right? <clears throat> impossible means not possible. Remember, il, im, in, and ear mean not, right? <clears throat> okay, so these are some great examples of words we might see with prefixes. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so now that we've learned several common prefixes, let's learn about some common suffixes. So prefixes come at the beginning of words, suffixes come at the end. So let's <clears throat> take a look, sorry guys. <clears throat> Whew. So let's look at common suffixes, <clears throat> ubble or ibble, ants and ants, eus, er and or, less, full, and fi or if I. <clears throat> so here we're going to look at, let's see, we have seven and plus some that mean the same thing that we're going to look at today. All right, so what do these mean? Able or ible mean can or capable of being. So for example, let's say I might use a word like mm, dependable or even better, understandable. So we saw the word understand with a prefix, misunderstand, don't understand or understand wrongly. We can also put a suffix on the base word understand, understandable, which means can understand or capable of understanding, right? If something is understandable, it means, ah, I can understand it. All right, so next we have ants and ants. This is a state or quality of being. So this, is, this can be a little confusing. This is a term we see a lot with suffixes, a state of being or a quality of being. So this is most often used for uh, adjectives, right? Words we use to describe things. And we'll see some examples of that. Next we have I-O-U-S, uh, which means full of, which we'll, uh, we'll see examples of in the future. So I-O-U-S, full of. Next we have er, and or, which is a person who, blank. So often we see a verb and er and or at the end. For example, teacher is a person who teaches, right? Next we have L-E-S-S, -S, which means without or lacking something. Full, unsurprisingly, means 
full of. And phi or if phi means to make. So let's take a look at some words that have these different suffixes and see if we can guess what they mean. All right, so first we have ubble. Let's add a base word. Adapt. Adaptable. So adaptable, if you remember, ubble means uh, can or capable of being. Adaptable means you can adapt. And adapt means change uh, to as you need to, right? If you start a new job, you need to be adaptable, able to adapt. Okay, next we have ants, which means a state or quality of being. So if we have the word brilliance, this is an adjective that means the state or quality of being brilliant. And as you will see with many suffixes, often we change the spelling of the base word <clears throat> to go with the suffix. So here our base word is actually brilliant plus our A-N-C-E ending and we get brilliance. Uh, so next we have I-O-U-S, which means full of. So a common word, base word for this is space. But since we're adding a vowel right here, we're going to take away that E and get the word spacious. This means full of space. This is an adjective we might use to describe mm, maybe a big house or um, a big car or something like that. Very spacious, a lot of space, full of space. Okay, next we have our ER ending, which means a person who blank, a person who does something. So teacher, person who teaches, right? Next we have LESS, -S, which means without or don't have something. So for example, homeless, is a word we would use to describe a person or uh, an animal or something like that that has no home, homeless, without a home. <clears throat> Next, we have full, F-U-L, which just like I-O-U-S means full of. So if I say I am thankful, that means I am full of thanks, right? I feel thankful. Um, very grateful is another word we might use. And last for our examples, we have if I, which means to make. So falsify, here we had to change the spelling. False means not true, right? So to falsify something means to make false, to make something untrue falsify. We often see maybe there is a, a document, a paper, um, and someone signed it who was not supposed to or something like that. They falsified it. They made it untrue. All right. So next, let's see if you can guess what these words mean with our suffixes. So first we have an easy one, truthful. Truthful would mean full of truth. Uh, this is an adjective we might use to describe a person who is very honest, right? So another word we might use here, honest, truthful, full of truth, right? Not uh, someone who lies. Next we have ambitious. So here we have our base word, which is ambition, and we added I-O-U-S suffix. So we just took off that ending and added I-O-U-S, ambitious. So remember, I-O-U-S means full of, so this means full of ambition. Ambition is that desire to mm, do good, do better in life reach your goals. Ambitious. So maybe you are very ambitious about learning English. 
That's why you're watching this video today, right? You are ambitious. Next, we have the word counselor. So we have our an OR ending, which means a person who does something, does the base word. So it, a counselor is a person who counsels or gives advice and is there to help, right? Next, we have the word permanence. So here again, we changed the spelling because our base word is permanent and we have an ence -E ending. So we just changed that permanence. So this is the state or quality of being permanent. So this is an adjective we might use um, or well, a noun, I suppose. I might say something has permanence it, ha it is uh, something that is permanent. Next, we have the word dependable. So we have an A-B-L-E ending, which means able, can, right? So dependable is uh, a word we used that means someone can be depended on or something can be depended on or trusted. So I might say my friend is very dependable, or I could even say my car is dependable. It is not going to break down or anything like that. So here we see some words with common suffixes. So now that we have looked at prefixes plus base words and base words plus suffixes, let's put it all together and see words that have all three, a prefix, a base word, and a suffix. We're going to look at five. All right, so number one, we're going to start easy, unbelievable. So this may be a word you have heard before, unbelievable. And notice again, we changed the spelling. Our base word is believe, but the suffix begins with a vowel, so we don't need to keep that E. So let's look piece by piece and see what this means. Well, we know our base word believe means to think something is true or real. I believe it. Un means not, and able means able, can or capable of being. So when we put it all together, unbelievable means not capable of being believed or you can't, cannot believe, right? So, oh, keep losing my mouse. There we go. Can not believe. It is unbelievable. You can't even believe, not possible of being believed. Okay, so similarly, next we have unstoppable. And here, sometimes when we add a vowel, some letters like uh, T or P might need to be doubled. So our base word is stop, but we had to add the uh, second P because we have our vowel coming after it. So unstoppable, again, un means not, a bowl means can. So this would mean not capable of being stopped or cannot stop something. Uh, maybe uh, I might describe Mm, my, I might describe a person as unstoppable. They are so um, motivated to reach their goals, just like ambitious, right? They are unstoppable. You cannot stop them. All right, next we have co-worker. So our base word is work. We all know what work is. Oh, something maybe that we enjoy sometimes and not other times. So co means with or together, and er is person who. So if we just look at worker, it is a person who works. And when we add co, it is a person who works together with someone. So this depends on our subject. My coworker is a person who works with me. Uh, your coworker is a person who works with you, right? So, coworker is a person who works with someone. Coworker. 
All right, a couple more. Next we have disrespectful. So here we see our base word is respect, which means mm, to, oh, how to describe respect. It is uh, maybe, uh, for example, I respect my parents or I respect my teachers. I have, uh, I feel that they are good people and I want to be good to them too. So let's add our prefix and suffix. Dis, remember dis and miss mean not or opposite of, and full means full of. So if we just have the word respectful, this is a word that is used to describe a person who has a lot of respect. So I might say that um, my young um, nephew is so respectful. He's always so polite and kind and he is never mm, uh, mean or never says the wrong thing to anyone. He's so respectful. Uh, his teachers love him, right? When we add dis, this means not or opposite of. So this word means not full of respect or opposite of respectful. So if someone is disrespectful, this might be in a classroom, for example, a student who is um, talking while the teacher is talking or who is um, not kind to other students and so on. This is disrespectful. All right, and last we have a word with a new suffix. Let's see if we can figure out what it means, inconsiderate. So consider, our base word here means to think about. So to consider means to think about in kind of a deeper way. So if I consider how you feel, this means I really think about it and it changes my actions. I consider your feelings before I do something. So here we have a prefix, in, which remember what these mean, il, in, im, and ear mean not, right? So not or opposite of. And this other new common suffix means to make or to cause to be. So we might often use a word just like respectful, considerate. This means someone who is, um, who is, who considers, right? This is to make someone consider. So if someone is considerate, they consider other people often, which again means think about, right? So inconsiderate means not caused to consider or the opposite of considerate. So someone who, uh, this word is kind of similar to disrespectful inconsiderate, don't think about other people, right? All right, so um, that is the main part of our lesson today. And I hope this really helps you to understand new words or even look at words you already know and start to see why they mean what they mean. So before we end today's lesson, let me give you a self-study tip. We have talked about some of the most common prefixes and suffixes, but um, there are so many more out there and it would be impossible to teach them all to you in one lesson. So um, a self-study tip, what other prefixes and suffixes have you noticed? Common beginnings or endings to base words. For example, maybe you've noticed ones like ED, LY, or TION. So even without looking it up, we know the ED ending means it's in the past. LY could change it to an adverb or a modifying word. And TION might change it to a noun, right? Consider, consideration. Uh, so pay attention when you read. Oh, there we have a T-I-O-N, an I-O-N ending. 
uh, when you read. Look for common beginnings and common endings and find out what they mean. Oh, we have ing as well, right? A common uh, suffix, ing. So pay attention when you read and look it up. Uh, look up online or just quickly search on your phone to find out what these prefixes and suffixes mean to help you have a better understanding as you continue uh, reading in the future. Okay, guys, so do you have any questions? I'm going to close my screen here. All right, so let's see. We have a comment. I'm glad to listen to this live lecture. Thank you. Well, thank you, Noreen, for listening today. This class is like a game, but is there a rule to know what prefix or suffix to use? Um, this is a great question. Thank you, Pedro. Is there a rule to know which to use? Yes, uh, because there are so many that have similar um, meanings like dis and un and il, im, and ir. Um, there is no real rule, unfortunately. This is uh, the joy of English. There's no real rule to know which one to use, um, but it's good. This is why it's good to know what the prefixes and suffixes mean, because it will help you to see new words and uh, pick apart what they mean. Right? Okay. So let's see if we have any other questions. Oh, we have a thank you. Thank you for your lessons. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you came. Did I come late to the class? Well, yes. <laughs> um, uh, yes, we start at nine o'clock. Oh, I see someone said they are confused. Well, um, if you are confused, you can always go back and look again. And if you uh, feel confused when you watch, just type a question as well, because I will always answer your questions after. Oh, here from Helen, unfashionable. Great word. You used un and a bowl. So in our base word there, fashion, right? Nice. If some, well, I'm not fashionable today, but if you have maybe very nice clothes, you dress very well, right? That's fashion. Fashionable means it can be considered to be fashion. So if you are fashionable, wow, you have a great style. Un means not, not fashionable. Mm. For example, maybe if you are wearing um, just some clothes you would wear to exercise, uh, maybe unfashionable. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for sharing your word, Helen. Incredible. Hmm. So here we have our ibble ending, right? Oh, and it disappeared. That's okay. Um, so yes, incredible. This is a word we have that um, means, of course, something is amazing, right? Let's see. Um, I see a lot of great examples. I see. Let's see if we have other questions. Yes, thank you, so, you guys so much for sharing your examples. Um, all right, I'm just looking. I see, again, you guys have typed some great words here. Ooh, very good. Yep. Doctor. Yep. Unless. Very good. Just scrolling through. All right, guys, it looks like we don't have any more questions for today. Just scrolling to the bottom. Um, okay. All right, guys. Well, it looks like uh, you guys don't have any more questions for today. Thank you for uh, sharing your words and coming up. Yes, you guys have typed and shared many great words with good prefixes and suffixes. I see some like irregular and unfortunately great job. Uh, those are, you can pick those apart and see or comfortable. Very good. Um, and I see we have a new comment, dishonest, impossible, impatient. Yeah, all those mean not, right? Not honest, not possible, not patient, right? So we see these prefixes and suffixes in so many words in English. So 
Uh, that's all for today, guys. Um, if you have any questions, any more questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Or you can always come to next week's live stream and ask your questions there too. So thank you so much for coming today. I hope that you enjoyed this lesson about prefixes and suffixes. See you guys next week, okay?